all local Jamaican mutton. I'm going to rub it up some more. And if you want a little more curry or a little more turmeric, I'll add it. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck of the When we dry them up, too cool. Now go too deep, you know. Yeah, yeah, fair watch you know. in. Our troops, see that? Apple cider vinegar and our troops. Come up at right, make them get saturated in the gravy and all of that. On today's episode of the Jamaican cooking journey, I'll be sharing with you how to season and slow cook on your stove top five pounds of mutton. Now, if you're new, you might know, you might not know that I really don't use powder seasonings. I mostly use herbs. So, the first thing I'm going to be putting in is some grounded pimento, freshly grounded pimento. And I'll be grating in some nutmeg. I have like a three quarters of a medium sized nutmeg and I'm going to put in all of that. I'm going to be putting in some cinnamon powder. These three ingredients that I just use, cinnamon powder, um, nutmeg and allspice or pimento. These three are ingredients that are in garam masala with other things like, I think, cumin. So let me add a little cumin. I think there are five, I don't know. But these three that I put in, because I normally, I realize, I've never used garam masala before then when I used it a few times. But when I looked at the ingredients, I realized that these are the three ingredients in there. Hence, I'm using it. A little cumin. I have five pounds cumin strong so I think I might go with about less than a half a teaspoon so we have some garam masala ingredients in there now fresh garlic and I'm gonna be putting in a ton of them right here let us not forget some salt I think a tablespoon of salt is good it's five pounds of mutton yeah I'm gonna stop there and I am going to now not forget to put in my ginger. I have five pounds, so I'm going to do this and a half of this. Wash your ginger. Some people scrape. If you want to scrape, scrape. I really, some things I scrape for, some things I don't. So I'm grating my ginger. So I really used the thick of this bigger piece because I realized that the ginger was thick, so I didn't need all two pieces okay now this is my favorite go-to my green scallions and you know what happened this is my preferred way of cutting them and I'll be doing this real thin and slender and sort of longish so I'm putting in all of this now I'm gonna be using my curry not the best oh I have my scotch bonnet leave I almost forgot it let me do my scotch bonnet I have one ripe one here preferably for the curry yeah I'm gonna put in the seeds and all five pounds of mutton it's gonna be slow cooked all the way pepper go lose the touch somewhere along the line really strong though but look here I think it's gonna be okay so I have here my curry powder and I'm gonna be putting in about I would say about five tablespoons for now for now for now and I'm gonna be doing a little rubbing now remember that mutton has sharp pieces mutton is a lot of bones so I'm gonna be going in right now with rubbing in I want to get especially my skeletons but be careful because mutton has a lot of sharp bones mm? yeah so i'm gonna be doing this and also i'm looking at my curry how it looks in there rubbing in right now and let me tell you this smells so good now as i rub i want to say something to you i said it lots and lots tons of times 
try to minimize the amount of liquid like water when you wash your meat that is left in your container that you're seasoning in do not leave a lot of water in your container okay make your meat the, you know the best here okay? guys look at this now you can see that i'm rubbing it up rubbing up and this meat looks a bit dry now some of these curries they um had um breadcrumbs to them and that's okay for me because i like a rich curry therefore when you cook the curry if you notice some people when they cook curry and cook it real good onto the core they have a thick rich looking gravy i like that i don't mind the breadcrumbs but sometimes maybe it's too much i'm not sure and that is why when you're using curry you notice or season up you notice that your meat gets a little dry so right here mine is looking a little bit dry so what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna add like about a tablespoon of oil whatever oil in a real matter you know to eat so oops that's good that's good yeah and i'm gonna rub in a little more and then i'm gonna test the look of my curry because look here i'm just gonna cook this curry me now i'm gonna burn no more curry when we're ready to cook it again but this looks so good i haven't forgotten my turmeric this turmeric has a pretty color so because the curry color them nowadays not so cute I always try to mix it with a little turmeric because you know the turmeric has no flavor it enhances the color it has that thing there the color you could use turmeric powder you could use freshly grated turmeric but be careful of the freshly grated one because it's strong mm -hmm. yeah so I put in about a tablespoon of turmeric powder yeah get some rubbing in going on again and then you can look and from there you can determine whether you want a little more curry or a little more turmeric let me rub this in but what i want you to look at look at this look at this real real rubbing up real seasoning up you can go ahead add your powdered seasonings not a problem do your thing do your thing but look at this i don't add time i know some people what happened to the time I never if you're not new here you know but if you're new you're just gonna know no I never add time to my curry okay but if you you add time to your curry do your thing but look at this rubbing up look at this five pounds of all local Jamaican milk me I go rub it up some more and if you want a little more curry or a little more turmeric I'll add it and then when you see me next I'll let it leave it to marinate for about 45 minutes in the interest of time on the video when you see me next, we'll all be ready for slow cooking on your stove top. Then, and only then, you'll see that process. So, this is my seasoned curry mutton. After 45 minutes, this is what it looks like. I am using my Dutch pot. You need to use a pot that is thick, whether a cast iron, anything that is thick to the bottom and to the sides. It helps with the slow cooking process because it holds and it traps a lot of heat. So I'm gonna be putting in salad five pounds, reasonable amount, yeah, than two pounds, yeah. So my oil, you don't have to be hot if you want it to be hot. That makes you stay a New York here when you drop it in your pot, fine. But I'm putting in mine like this, yeah. And I'm showing you this is what it looks like, yeah. I'm gonna be putting in all of this and come back to you okay family so this is it so now that you put it in and you have it on a reasonably high heat you want to start just mixing around mixing around and you can see that rich goodness that nice seasoning mm? and I can tell you try to use the garam masala if you don't get the garam masala on its own use a little cumin use some freshly grated nutmeg use some cinnamon powder yeah look at this you see all this and i see all them grated ginger coming up yeah you want to let it stay there you're just gonna mix it up now what you're doing now is mixing up what was at the bottom coming to the top mm, be careful so you see you're gonna need a dutch pot you know so you see, if you don't have no dutch pot but i suggest you start get going to get one and don't get the camouflage dutch pot them in and get the upfront 
Jamaican Dutch pot. Now, this is what we got. Now, what you need to do at this point is add some hot water because we're just going to use about, probably about a tablespoon or two or maybe just as much as my big spoon. Just to rinse your container. But you're going to need hot water right through the cooking process. So we're going to rinse our seasoning container. Rinse out them nice goodness there. Yeah. Now we're just going to throw it to the side. Right to the side right there. Yeah. So this is how we're starting off. Our slow cooked curry mutton. Mm? We'll leave it on a medium sized heat. And we're going to leave it to start, to start doing its thing. And then... Probably in another 10 minutes. Look at this. You don't want to get it much, much, much higher. Let us put it at that. Yes. We're going to leave it there while it's our kettle. Kettle. Boil. As you go along with the slow cook process, you need hot water. As soon as it dries out, you're going to need a little hot liquid to revamp it. Now, if the curry is not to your suit, you don't want to try adding some raw curry because this curry is starting to cook now. There is a video on the channel here that I've done some years ago preparing curry paste. Curry paste is curry that is cooked with some water and a little bit of oil. Yes, and I use a little bit of oil, I think, to saute some ginger and some garlic and cook it, cook it until it's properly cooked and we keep it. That can be used for shrimp. It can be used for anything that doesn't um, need long cooking with curry because for me, I'm not cook my curry under half an hour. Mm? 30 minutes for me, my curry, I don't eat anything that is cooked with curry under half an hour. I don't play around with that. So you let it, you see how we do it in that video and you want to make yourself some curry paste. But mind you, you know, sometimes you might think you want to keep adding curry, adding curry, and adding more curry, it's going to start to get bitter. Because sometimes the curry is just no good. And when it's no good, you just have to just live with it. You know? Because it's going to start getting so bitter because you continue adding curry. But try to adjust yourself. Try to know what you're doing. Just try to know what you're doing. Because these days, the curries, they are really challenging. Eh? So, find a good curry. And if you think that you, you need a little more, you put, when you make your curry paste, you just put a small amount and bump it up. So, this is what it looks like right here. Leaving it on the low for another 10 to 15 minutes and let all those juices gel and come together whilst we leave our kettle being coming to a boil. So I'll catch you in the next clip. Also, we are going in for the very first time and this is what it looks like with, the, with that steam that we it built up and that um, small amount of water that we rinsed out our seasoning container with and put it in there. And let me tell you, this is what is happening right here. It seems as if it's not a whole, whole, too much of a huge goat. So you're going to cook. And remember, I told you, you see the thickness of this gravy. So I told you that some of the curries, they carry a little breadcrumbs to give the curry that thickness. Okay, still not the prettiest of curry. But, you know, I thought I, I had a prettier um, turmeric powder and I did not use that one. I made a mistake and used but nevertheless, it's there. So as soon as this liquid starts to recede and goes down, and when you put your spoon to the bottom, you feel as if it's sticking, then you will pull now for your hot water. You're gonna use it, maybe about two of this spoon or three of this spoonful a little at a time, round to the side, because if you insist on throwing it on the direct meat, you're gonna get meat them come white. Mm? So you're gonna cook and look at this. So you're gonna continuously as soon as the water recedes, and this must be on me fairly low heat because you don't want it, you know, as you move around. Yeah. So as it cooks too, the amount, if you notice, when we started cooking, it was way up here. So it's cooking now. The meat starts cooking. So it is going to go right down in the pot and you will know, Kaya. You, you cook, you must know if it tastes your meat and all of that. So we're going to continue cooking, adding our water. As soon as it um, recedes, add in our little water. Remember to give thorough, complete steers right around. Look at the thorough steer. You start from here, scrape around the side of your pot, a 360 steer down to the bottom. 
under and over and mix and make sure your meat is cooked evenly. So we're gonna do that. And at a certain point, we are gonna come to dice our potatoes if we need a little extra salt, and then we are gonna gig it up from there. So at that point, I'll come back. Okay, now, family, our curry mutton is like three quarters of a way going down. This is a really chewy mutton too. And this is what it looks like, you see? We have that gravy thing going on, yeah. What I like to do at this point, I wanna pep it up a bit. I'm going to be grating some excess fresh garlic, yeah? And if you want to put, you can put some garlic powder too, if, it's, that's what, if that's what suits you. A little black pepper, as we didn't season with any black pepper, but I'm putting it at this point, not a lot. Also, I want to put a little, if I had a celery, I'll put a little freshly chopped celery. But I put some extra um scotch bonnet and a little green bell pepper but celery would be the better thing right there at this point now got me my diced potatoes putting them in yeah and you see that look you see that look yeah and also i'm gonna be putting in about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a little of some butter and that is totally up to you it's not compulsory so I'm gonna get this all gelled in mix in look at that I'm gonna get my flame up a little bit just a little bit this is the last time I'm gonna add some water and I'm gonna add about a cup of water or a little less than a cup that is less than a cup and I'm gonna put it in let it come to a boil and as it starts boiling I just turn back my flame down to low also you want to test here if you got the right salt perfection and whatever else you feel like you want to add, add it. but remember try if you have some fresh celery sticks chop it fine and leaves too and put it in there this is what I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna leave in it believe in it on the low eat for another 25 to 30 minutes at that point our curry mutton will be ready so this is your finished or finished dish family all done all of that you see that yeah look at the richness of this gravy yeah look at this and this is your meat all cooked and chilled and look at the pieces you see the bones yeah the bone them are green up and these are the pieces that you must put your meat in for mutton curry mutton family stew mutton and all of them so you're not to cut it any bigger all done there i'm gonna plate up some for you in the next clip better look for you i've served it up with some rice and peas a little few sliced tomatoes and some lettuce this is what we have from my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach, it is Jamaican curried mutton done for you, step by step. Please do enjoy. Remember to make sure that you're subscribed to the Jamaican cooking journey when you do. Remember to hit that notification bell. Press the option that says all. Now the other niceness. Remember to make sure you be you, do you. Most of all, love you. Some of this Jamaican curried mutton done step by step remember to add some of that garam masala ingredients to it or better yet if you can find a pre-made garam masala thanks for the love thanks for the support remember to check out my patreon page remember to check out our merch paypal is there cash app and sell and there's also a number for you to get on to me for no anky panky reasons okay thanks for the love once more and be you do you most of all love you